Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today is Sunday, September 27th, 2020. And in today's video, we're going to be doing an election prediction with Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Now, in today's video, what we're looking at right now is the CNN uh, 2020 projection map. Uh, they have essentially um, came out with this 269 for Biden, 169 for Trump, and 100 battleground electoral votes left. What's really interesting about this map, though, is a lot of these states, Donald Trump won that are battlegrounds here, and, you know, Wisconsin, Michigan, all of the, you know, both of those two states went to Donald Trump in 2016. Uh, so to see these uh, states as battlegrounds or flipping to Joe Biden, uh, very interesting um, as, you know, we are 37 days till the election. Um, you know, it is right around the corner, so we do want to make sure that we are, you know, keeping all of that in mind. You know, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, these are states that a lot of people would assume Donald Trump would have won uh, quite handedly, uh, you know, before the, you know, COVID-19 and all of that came around. Uh, so to see that as still a toss up in the, uh, you know, 37 days out is a little bit shocking, but not really, uh, especially when considering the swing state, uh, you know, mechanisms around Florida, Ohio, and, you know, now arguably Pennsylvania. Now, as these uh, last 100 delegates that are still left on the board are about to be, uh, you know, dueled out for us, um, I do just want to also point out that uh, this is not set in stone. You know, November 3rd is still, you know, 37 days away, so we still have uh, quite a bit of time to sort of see these, uh, you know, essentially these states sort of flip a little bit back and forth. Now, I do want to point out that most of these states, though, should remain relatively the same. Um, now, where Donald Trump can sort of pick up a little bit of ground here, especially since, you know, we haven't even gone into the first debate. Remember, the first debate is supposed to be held on the 29th. Uh, that will be in Cleveland, Ohio. Now, I would say out of all of these states on the board, this is the state that Donald Trump uh, would in my opinion, uh, be more poised to win uh, out of all of the states that we still see here. Now, the debate against uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, that is going to be hosted by Chris Wallace. Now, CNN was doing a report that, uh, you know, roughly 1,200 people were supposed to be attending uh, that specific debate. However, only around 60 to 70 people are going to be seated in the debate. So that could serve as a lot of contention as they do move through on that debate. Um, now, as well, I do see a win potentially in that, uh, you know, second congressional district there in uh, New uh, Nebraska uh, for Donald Trump. Now, that would secure the planes for Trump, uh, and that would sort of, you know, gain a little bit more momentum back into the Trump column. As a lot of individuals are pointing out on, you know, YouTube and other platforms, uh, you know, it's really going to boil down to Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, and the state of Florida. Georgia should definitely, in my opinion, be one of those states that isn't necessarily going to be called, I don't think, on election day, but I think ultimately it should land in the Trump column. Um, now, I do think it's going to be one of these states that is going to be very light, uh, a light win for Donald Trump. Maybe it might come down to one to two points for Donald Trump, uh, but ultimately Donald Trump, I believe, would secure that, even with that new minority appeal sort of going into the Biden column. Uh, with that African-American turnout coming out in, you know, Atlanta and the Savannah areas, respectively. Uh, but all of that being said, Donald Trump does have a lot of new Latino appeal, which is why I was a little bit of, you know, it came to a surprise to me uh, to see a state like Arizona and Nevada going to Joe Biden. Uh, I'll, you know, be that Mark Kelly is making a huge wave in Arizona. Catherine Cortez Masto, equal wave in Nevada. Uh, but I would sort of expect that to start leaning towards the Donald Trump column in future videos for sure. Uh, now, the state of Florida as well, I could see that, 
you know, likely going to Donald Trump, much like the state of Texas, uh, a state like Florida, if that were to go to Joe Biden, I think a lot more of that Cuban Latinx vote would have to start coming out in favor of Joe Biden. So, you know, based off of all of that that we know about the Latin vote that is starting to come out in droves for uh, Donald Trump, um, I wouldn't be surprised if Florida were to continue to be a red state, at least through 2020. 2024, that may be a whole new story, uh, but, you know, as far as the 2020 election, I think it would be safe uh, to consider that uh, for Donald Trump. Um, now, Again, if we're talking about that second congressional district in Maine, if we're moving up all the way into New England, um, you know, I really think that Donald Trump has uh, potential to carry that second congressional district. Now, it is only one electoral vote, but remember, in the year 2000, George W. Bush only won by 271 electoral votes. Now, 270 is the number that is needed to win. Uh, so I do you know, think that that is potential for Donald Trump to carry that. Uh, and as a result, being that Pennsylvania, and again, this is the place that Joe Biden is hoping that he is going to hold. This is the place that he, th he is wanting to take out of all of these Midwestern states. This is the one that he would love to see go to the Democrats. Uh, now, I see that as a state that's going to be, you know, possibly very close but it it's one of these pla it's one of these states that look the union jobs are not what they used to be manufacturing is not what it used to be and Donald Trump is the one of the only candidates that's actually coming up with some sort of a solution to sort of save that economy in that area and I think they're going to give Donald Trump one more chance uh, to try to make uh, to make a claim, to try to make something happen out of that area. Uh, and again, I also see, uh, you know, uh, North Carolina also going to Donald Trump. Now that would sort of take the wind out of uh, Joe Biden's sales when it comes to the minority appeal, which is why I would be surprised that a state like Michigan or a state like Wisconsin would go to uh, Joe Biden as well. Now. If you really concentrate on uh, the Midwest for just a moment, uh, taking a look at Minnesota, this is a state that Hillary Clinton won, a state that uh, you know Obama won. This is a state Kerry won. So this is a traditional Democrat state, and to have that as likely going to the Democrats in this election, I I would you know, believe this is very telling. You would assume that it would be more solid like in Illinois, more solid like, you know, maybe in Maryland, for example. Uh, so to see this as going, uh, you know, likely at this hour, 37 days till the election, I would not be surprised if that is a state that could flip to, you know, the GOP. And again, Looking at the way the, the you know the Latino vote is really coming out for Donald Trump, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a sneak of the GOP's you know basically coming out and taking Nevada. Now it could be one of these states that tilt, you know, barely by you know less than a point. That could be something that we could see, and that's something that we should be prepared for. Uh, and you know, again, this is something that we could see out of a place like Wisconsin as well. So I don't want you guys to think that this election is over because the GOP clearly has some, you know, uh, the October surprise hasn't come out yet. There's a lot of things that can still happen between now and Election Day. Uh, so honestly, based on this map that CNN is showing, it would almost seem like it would be an uphill climb for Donald Trump. However, I would, you know, honestly look the, in the other direction and sort of say, hey, I really think that, you know, fourth time for Joe Biden running for president, maybe uh, his ship has sailed. And honestly, I think that that's what you're going to see in a state like Minnesota, potentially, and arguably a state like Michigan as well. Now, Michigan is one of these states where in a thousand years, I never would have thought that, you know, since the Romney family uh, governing the state of Michigan, it would go back to the Republicans. But, you know, seeing how that county by county turnout happened in western Michigan, uh, you know, Calhoun County, Cass County, uh, Berrien County, St. Joseph County, these counties all coming out for the Republicans in 2016. Uh, very surprising to see that. Uh, so 
honestly, I could see that happening again. Uh, now, Rick Snyder, not in the picture. That could really help Donald Trump endorsing Joe Biden. He's very unpopular in a place like Michigan. Even if Arizona were to go blue, Michigan, you know, retaining to the Republicans would be huge, and it would be a massive wake-up call, I believe, to the Democrats and understanding, A, they don't understand the Midwest, and they do not understand that shifting demographic uh, that, we're, you know, we're all starting to see throughout that region. Um, so there you guys go. That's what I really believe the election can, could, you know, ultimately shift to. 311 for Donald Trump. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the political discussion. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought about all of that. Don't forget to like today's video if you haven't had a chance to do so already. And... I'll see you in the next one. I catch them all.